Good morning, everybody. My name is Paul Duggan. I'm the general manager of the Canterbury Safety Charter, and uh, we are uh, obviously a recipient of the ACC Injury Prevention Fund in, in the last round, and our project is called uh, BIM Safe New Zealand. The idea of this program is to reduce risk and injury using the visualisation and collaboration powers of BIM, and we're trying to do two things, increase the amount of um, health and safety information in BIM models, and then to allow greater worker access to that information to make real-time decisions on their own health and safety. Basically, this is a, a huge collaboration project, and there are a lot of partners involved. Obviously, ACC are there through the Injury Prevention Fund. We also have MB there, um, and they are through what's called the Building Innovation Partnership at the University of Canterbury. That We also have Naitahu on board um, as part of this project. And the other interesting thing is that uh, Naitahu and ACC together are also the client um, on one of the project case studies. Uh, we have a, a steering group who look after the governance. So we have uh, our chairman is Chris Alderson from Construction, Health and Safety New Zealand. We have uh, Lindsay Crossan, who is the chair of the Building Innovation Partnership um, Governance Group, and he is a former um, CEO of Fulton Hogan. And then from the Canterbury Safety Charter, we have um, Ian Campbell, who is uh, the chairman of the uh, Board of Safety Charter, and he is a former um, head of SCIRT. Sitting beneath the steering group, we have an advisory group, and uh, these are some of the members of the advisory group. This was at our launch. Um, and they represent a, a large number of organisations from uh, industry and the list of organisations that we have on board are here. So, um, yes, yeah, so basically the advisory group is responsible for the management of the project along with the Canterbury Safety Charter and I am the project lead. The big picture outcomes for this project is a reduction in accident injury uh, through a greater understanding, communication and mitigation of risk. And obviously what uh, Dan talked about was a change in stakeholder behaviour. Um, and this is throughout a facility's life cycles. This is from not just the construction phase, this is starting at the design phase all the way through construction, through to use and maintenance, and then finally the demolition. So all of that whole life cycle we can influence through uh, the BIM model. Uh, the outputs of this project, this is the things we're trying to come up with at the end, is we're trying to produce the best practice guidelines for integrating health and safety uh, into BIM models. We're going to have video and online resources to support these guidelines, and then we plan to do a, a nationwide roadshow uh, once we launch the guidelines to, guidelines to educate the industry. The other project outputs, we're doing an international literature, literature review, which we've done, and we're going to do six research papers on BIM safe for design, for construction, procurement, civil works, structural works, and subtrades. So the project is a three-year project. We have three work streams. Uh, number one is the best practice guidelines. That will be uh, basically writing, editing, reviewing, and then publishing the best practice guidelines for New Zealand. To support the guidelines, we have a case study. So the guidelines will be trialled during an actual construction project, and then that will feed back into the final version of the guidelines. So any uh, you know, wrinkles we can sort of iron out along the way, and then they can help uh, write it going forward. And then finally, our knowledge transfer and extension plan, where we will obviously you know, raise awareness and publish, you know, push this out into industry. But as uh, Dan was saying, we've already started this in terms of raising awareness. We have a, a social media platform, we have a website, and we've had probably 12 uh, media articles published about the project to date. We start with, you know, what is BIM? So BIM is Building Information Modeling. I guess you're all familiar with a uh, 2D plan of a of a project, which can be a, a, an overview or it can be an elevation view, and that is what you know architects, designers, builders have worked with for you know for hundreds of years. And so that led on to um, computer aided design or CAD where instead of drawing lines with you know, your ruler and your pencil and uh, and measuring them like that, that was done with computer. And so that was the next evolution. From that, BIM goes into 3D space. So instead of a two-dimensional, it is now a three-dimensional model of a construction project. And, uh, and so there's an example. This is the ACC building in Dunedin, which will be the case study. So that is the, the model of the building. And this is obviously a, quite a, a, a large view, but you can zoom right in and get very, very fine detail. So the advantages of working in this is that everybody can work on the single model. And so instead of your, your designers, your, you know, your fire engineers, your service engineers, your structural engineers, all doing that bit separately and then sending all the papers in, 
everybody can work on a single module, everybody can collaborate, and people can work around each other to you know, avoid clashes in services and structure, and they can see what the product is going to look like three-dimensionally rather than trying to visualize it from a two-dimensional plan. So the two, the twin things that we're trying to do is to use BIM are its visualization, visualization power, so it gives a 3D picture, you know, making it real rather than on a plan, and also the ability for a whole lot of people to collaborate on the model at a single time. And this has huge benefits from a health and safety perspective for the way that risks can be mitigated and, and looked at and managed in real time. Um, so this is just another um, a render of the, the BIM model showing you can go from the structural elements all the way through to the finished facade. Um, this is the detail you can zoom into. So if you saw that this is a, a one of the panels on the external, but imagine you can go into this detail in any part of the building. So you can get down to the individual nuts and bolts holding you know, steel joints together. Um, here is just a little video of what the ACC building looks like. So hopefully this will play. The advantages of using a BIM model for a construction project is that it becomes a single source of truth so that all the information about the building, design, construction, demolition even, can be stored within the model. So at its core, a BIM model is just data and you can put in different types of data into that model and have it stored in the model, being it health and safety information, being it you know, construction detail, being looking at a, a space. So. The other thing is that it's a collaboration tool that many people can sit around and look at something specifically and have their input into it, you know, before anything actually has started. So this is just in the planning phase. You can have the designers, you can have the contractors, you can have the health and safety managers looking at the model and giving their input. So you can have all those decisions made from people that actually have to do the work. And so you're able to have that conversation before anything started rather than you know, at the time of construction. Um, and then obviously you can communicate risks and you can see the risks, train them and have them look at the risks without exposing them to the risks. So you can say, here is the safe way to do this work and take them through step by step, enabling them to visualize it before you actually start and take them through the process. Here is an example of, uh, this is from our model, this is the uh, some health and safety information that can be put into a BIM model, and obviously it's just in the form of a spreadsheet. Well, the client has come and said, these are the risks that we perceive on the site at the moment, and so this stuff can be talked through with the designers, and then those risks mitigated at the design stage. Now, traditionally, this information in a, in a CAD time would be basically put in a big file folder, and then it would, would be transferred through to the main contractor for them to deal with. And so it's very easy for the health and safety information to get lost within the reams of paperwork that would go with the 2D plans. And so being able to have this stored within the model, you can access all these decisions, all these mitigations within the model itself. Um, this is some of the other stuff you can do within the model. You can put these little, um, if you like, pins or breadcrumbs. You can say here is a particular hazard that can be flagged and identified. And so when the construction is at that stage, these hazards can be shown to workers. So you can do a toolbox talk, for example, here is the site as it looks today, here are the hazards that you will be facing today, and they can be identified and seen. And so this is very good for people where maybe English is a second language or low literacy levels. Obviously for planning, I mean, anything that, that benefits from planning is obviously beneficial using a BIM model because you can you basically do all the thinking about a project and then you can timeline it before it starts and you can identify any bottleneck areas, anything you need to consider when a crane is in place and what that's going to look like. You can look at the, the traffic on site at any particular day and how that should be managed. You can look at um, overlapping duties where you can have a whole lot of different sub trades on site and they tend to fight over each other for space, and but you can assign them space, assign them areas to lay down their, their equipment, and so they're not you know, walking over each other, which again creates additional risks.
Um, all the information, obviously it's just the data and it can be kept. And so all the service information, all of the information on the um, what you know, the building looks like at the time, the lifting methodologies, the plant and equipment zones, all that stuff can be stored in the planning stage rather than doing it uh, as its building is being constructed. And then obviously as a communication tool, everybody can see what the site looks like now, what the site is going to look like, and you can see obviously what is actually happening at any one time. And so this is beneficial not for health and safety, but for the whole construction process, which is why so many more organizations are moving to BIM uh, for their projects now. Um, here's an example of where you can um, obviously use AR and VR to look inside a wall to see what services may be behind the wall. And this definitely has applications for service strikes. And this is something that's coming in the future, but obviously this is what BIM models can be used for going down the track. Um, in terms of our project, this is the outputs that we are going to have and also what we see as the benefits. Um, I don't need to go through this step by step, but you may want to just uh, glance down there for now and look at the, what we're going to do and then what we hope to achieve in terms of the benefits. Um, the International Literature Review is one thing that we have done and that has basically highlighted there is a lot of um, literature on health and safety using BIM in the design phase. There is very little uh, in the actual construction phase. So what we are doing is, you know, obviously trying to get some um, data on the uptake of BIM by the worker. So you can imagine a worker being able to access uh, the model um, by a, an iPad in real time to make decisions. There is very little of that that's actually done. So in that respect, this is quite cutting edge. The author team has just been uh, just signed the contracts and the chapter chapters have been worked on and an outline of what's going to go into the, the guidelines. Um, in terms of the, the case study, uh, obviously it's just civil works are just starting. The main contractor, we have a letter of intent with the main contractor. We did our first video uh, filming the other day of the design phase and it was interesting that uh, you know, interviewing the individual designers and all the benefits that we thinking were there, they said to us you know, very much unprompted that we were able to validate, I guess, what we were thinking in the feedback we got from the designers. So that was uh, that was really good to, to do that. It's a survey that that has been, um, is ready to go now. And obviously the feedback that our initial view was that a lot of people, a lot more people knew about BIM within the industry than, than actually is the case. And we've got to provide a pathway through the survey for those who are uh, looking at it for the very first time. And uh, finally, that that's what um, what the the building is going to look like. It will be occupied by the ACC at their offices. And again, uh, I guess uh, that was the the inspiration uh, was the food basket there for the design and some of the features of the weaving uh, and the output, which is quite cool. And obviously, what Arthur said before about the collaboration and uh, you know with a basket of knowledge you know, being shared uh, is going to be beneficial to the whole industry. Take the opportunity for uh, any questions. I just want to check the, the for workers and people, sort of frontline people. What is the facility? What facilities they have to access this type of technology? Um, at the moment, very limited. In Australia, uh, Victoria Rail have done a huge amount of work on this, so they they've had a big uh, big process of uh, changing all their level crossings because I've, I've highlighted a number of risks around level crossings for pedestrians and vehicles. And they've gone about redesigning a lot of those. They have a big project and all of them have been BIM modeled beforehand and obviously using that again to educate workers in how to go about doing construction work very safely. What we sort of think is, is obviously this is quite cutting edge, but we are very keen to enable workers to access the BIM models and see this is the work that they're going to be doing today. Here are the risks associated with that work. Here are the mitigations that the design team have already put in place to help you. And then you can obviously make decisions you know, with your health and safety advisors as how to best carry out that work safely. Um, uh, excellent, Paul. Um, Paul, with the, your advisory group, how do you see or where, where is your advisory group leaning into systems change? Uh, is it through uh, the behaviour change, or is it is it around some change to policy? What what type of uh, policy or practice might you hope to see change? Um, there there is a big movement for BIM in New Zealand. So there is a um, MB have set up a um, basically a BIM acceleration committee, which was the idea is to increase digitisation within the construction industry in New Zealand, and the Construction Accord are also working in this space as well. 
So what our push to change is if we're doing this, going down the BIM track, here is a great opportunity to include health and safety information into the BIM models and enable workers to get it out. So we're looking at basically getting on the wave that is BIM because you know, in, in five years time, I think even small construction projects will be utilizing BIM and that, that's the reality. And so we're trying to ride that wave and say, here's the opportunity to train people how to use BIM for health and safety as just one of the benefits of using BIM. So at the moment, really, it's got to be client driven. So the clients have got to say, because there is a cost. You know, if you do a BIM model of your project, it's a cost of another you know, 100000 or $150,000 to go through that thing. And they have to see value in doing that. And at the moment, there is huge commercial value because it's essentially an insurance policy against things going wrong. The more work you can do up front to plan, the smoother the project is and you don't have the huge cost blowouts and time blowouts because you haven't done sufficient planning throughout that project. And especially with the number of design and build projects now that, that you know, an early main contractor engagement because the, you want the contractor to be sitting on the design as well because they've got to build it rather than just giving them the plan to saying go ahead and build it. So all those things are becoming normalized. So we're trying to hop on that and say, while you're doing that, here's an opportunity to really improve health and safety outcomes. Designers are very well versed in health and safety by design. And part of the 2015 legislation says you must design things safely. They must be able to be built safely and you must be able to take them down safely. But at the moment, that stuff gets left at the design stage and doesn't go through necessarily to the workers. The main contractor gets the plans and they have all their health and safety people reinvent the wheel that's already been done because they have their own processes and procedures on health and safety they have to follow. And quite often then you're missing a, a link to what's been happening at the design stage. So getting your health and safety people from the contractor into the design room, getting the people who are going to maintain the buildings into the design room is that collaboration part that we're trying to facilitate. The indicators we want are basically organizations specifying the use of the health and safety guidelines as part of the BIM process. So you know, when you go out to tender, you'd say, yes, we expect you to use the health and safety BIM, the BIM safe guidelines as part of this process. Already um, for government procurement, every project over 5 million uh, has to have a BIM model associated with it. That we hope the government will pick this up through MB and say, here's another opportunity to further embed this. And, and we are hope is that us, it becomes normal. This is just the way of doing business now is utilizing you know, the 3D model space as a way of collaborating on health and safety and communicating the risks better to workers.